There's simply no other cell like it. And we can ask questions that we simply couldn't ask before. We also hope that it has implications for transplantation biology. And I think for very specific diseases, there's great promise in that area. But what people have to understand is there's a lot of work to be done. I think Jamie's abilities are really special. He certainly did see the potential for this and wanted to ensure that, that lots of folks had access to the technology and the ability to be able to use these stem cells for all of the things that they could be used for. I have no doubt whatsoever that this is an important research tool that will change medicine, period. But, you know, 20 years from now, we might be doing it in different ways. My first introduction to this was in the context of a federal advisory commission. In 1993, 1994, President Clinton was looking at the possibility of beginning to use federal monies to fund research that involved the use of human embryos. But obviously anything having to do with human embryos is going to raise a lot of controversy. Talking to Jamie, it was clear that the same backlash that we saw in 1994 could happen again when he goes public with the fact that he is now doing research that involves using human embryos that otherwise would have been discarded. They're not, they were never slated to become fetuses or babies. Carl Gulbranson, who was the head of Wharf at the time, uh, worked with others to uh, develop a facility where Jamie could work completely independent of anything that involved public funding. The issue of research involving stem cells derived from human embryos is increasingly the subject of a national debate. In order to avoid even the possibility, which by the way was hypothetical only, that the prospect of federal funding to work on cell lines would encourage people to get private money and destroy more embryos to derive more lines, we won't fund any work on any new lines. And on that basis, federal funding was permitted for a very limited number of lines that existed at that time a good percentage of which existed where? In Wisconsin. I moved up here, and, but it was specifically to work here and to work with Dr. Gam. We've had a number of people that have they've come from all over the world to, to train in our lab, to learn how to, to, to use our techniques um, to be able to make uh, retina you know, from stem cells in a dish. So there were many, many more lines, and the question now was, with the federal government give researchers in the U.S. a chance to use federal grants to work with this wider range of lines. Jamie Thompson and Shinya Yamanaka devised a way to reprogram other cells to behave like human embryonic stem cells. And the ability to do this really stunned the community, the research community, I think, because you're now talking about development going backwards and inducing stem cells with, in, a, in a way that we didn't think was possible. Today, with the executive order I am about to sign, we will bring the change that so many scientists and researchers, doctors and innovators, patients and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. In March of 2009, the president issued an executive order on this new policy concerning the funding of embryonic stem cell research, as well as on integrity and science. And it was an amazing ceremony in the East Room of the White House. You know, a number of us from Wisconsin were there. In the area of hope, we are seeing more and more research that is getting closer to being able to truly regenerate tissues and cells in our bodies so-called regenerative medicine, to regenerate ourselves. The research is progressing with some real progress in certain areas under very controlled clinical trials or certain basic lab science. I don't know what, what it is that we would be doing if you know, we didn't have his pioneering research um, with you know, ES and IPS cells. There's no other way to, to make legitimate, in our case, photoreceptors, but any, any cell. Without those two discoveries, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing.